I'm your host, Twenty Three. You're joining me for Big Sky Country, Book Two, Chapter Fourteen. World famous. You enter the house after a long day of work when Cliff calls you into the living room. The entire Oakley family is waiting for you. What's going on? We need to have a candid discussion about how it's happening with my health and uh, what's to come. Buff. With me? This feels like a family thing. You are family, John! And, uh, what I have to say concerns you, too. First things first, I'm sorry I didn't tell you how quickly my health was going. I, I was... I was afraid. I get it, Dad. I'm sorry I was so hard on you. And we know now, Grandpa. That's, uh, all that matters. Now I accept I'm not gonna be around much longer. I need to take, uh, need to make most of the time I have left, starting with the ranch. Cliff turns to look at Duke and Sawyer than you. I'm handing the place over to the three of you. The three of us? Uh, did you know about this, John? I. But I haven't said yes yet. You're free to say no, of course, but I hope you don't. Duke, I'm not here to try and take anything that's rightfully yours. I... No, no, you've earned it. I just didn't realize Dad had not this far ahead yet. Brooklyn wraps her arms around her dad and gives her a soft smile. And, uh... I would give you a chance to pursue your business opportunities, Duke, and spend more time with Brooklyn. I like the sound of that. Me too, sweetheart. And I know John wanted to be a coder person before he came here. Uh, that's true. I, I let that dream go for a bit while I focused on ranch stuff, but now... And Sawyer, I know, or well, I don't want you to give up on the rodeo for the ranch again. Heard it did that once. Actually, Dad, I decided to retire from the rodeo. What? When did you decide this? Burrows the back of his neck, looking a little sheepish. A while ago, actually. I uh, just hadn't gotten around to telling everybody yet. And uh, it's not because of you, Dad. It's because of me. And besides... Sorry, gives you a big smile. The ranch is my dream now. Well, I can't argue with that. I'm not gonna go in anywhere anymore. Me neither. Well, until college. That's for me. I'm here for the long haul. Music to my ears. And mine. Cliff looks at all of you, his eyes shining with unspilled tears. <clears throat> Y'all have made an old fool very happy. Good, cause making you happy is our sole job for the next, uh... Duke trails off and you put a comforting hand on his shoulder. For as long as we can. I have an idea. Why don't we all make an old-fashioned family dinner like we used to with Mom? And we make a roast? And our special biscuits and gravy! Grandma used to cook anything vegan by any chance? Nope. We can uh, improvise. Oh, f that. Then count me in. John, will you join in? You're officially part of the family now, and uh, it means the world to us. You look around the room at the hopeful faces of the people who made you a part of their family. I hate doing this book. I really do. But it's not because of what you guys think. It's because of what I'm going through. I'd be honored. Follow Cleese into the kitchen, and Duke turns on some country music, and Cliff starts tapping his feet to the beat. That's the stuff! Look to Sawyer and raise an eyebrow. Mom always used to cook to country music, usually of Dolly Parton. 
We used to catch her and dad in here dancing while the roast burned. Aw, oh, that's sweet. I don't think you're fully understanding how mom and pop were in PDA. They was always embarrassing. We catch them kissing everywhere. Oh no, not kissing. Whatever will we do? Not the fine art of kissing. When you find someone you love, you gotta show them every chance you get. Speaking of, if there's an arm around Brooklyn kissing her soundly on the cheek, she giggles and gives him a tight high. Oh, I love you too, Grandpa. Duke blinks hard as she smiles at his daughter and his father hugging each other. Now, uh, where's that recipe book? Over here. I got the biscuits recipe committed to memory. I'll take care of them. I'll, uh, I'll do the roast and the gravy. Brooklyn, why don't you help me wash and chop the veggies? My specialty. Uh, what can I do? Jump in wherever. <laughs> Cliff. Oh, show me what to do, Cliff. I'm gonna throw some ingredients in the bowl and then you start kneading it. Ooh, sounds fun. You get to work bopping along to the music. So tell me more about uh, your wife, Cliff. Yeah, tell us more about Grandma. Yeah, she was an angel. She was uh, somehow simultaneously the toughest lady and the biggest sweetheart around. And the biggest mama bear ever. We didn't know about her. Uh, tell us about the... Hey, you met. Oh, this is a good story. Well... Adelaide and I met so many years, or so many times over the years. It's hard to pinpoint the first time, but she was a sweet ridge born and raised, same as me. But uh, I'll tell you about the first time I really noticed my Addie. Is that a cute high school story? No, she was a senior when I was only a freshman. We never spoke at school. An older woman, huh? Older and wiser and prettier. Today in question, I was 22, standing in line for the post office. I was sending off mail order for a new pair of boots. She cut in front of me, like I wasn't in there. Let me guess, you took that well. Well, I ain't pushing, uh, ain't no pushover. But uh, when I told her to get back out of uh, back of the line, she looked me up and down and said, Make me skinny. I'll chuckle as you paint her the picture of the interaction. I asked her out on the spot. We were married six months later. That's sweet, Grandpa. Can you tell the story again from my vlog? Sure, honey. Whatever. Brooklyn runs upstairs, grab her camera, and you meet Sawyer's eye across the kitchen. What? Why? Soon you and the Oakleys are gathered around the dinner table. A hearty feast is spread out before you. Well, before we get started, I just want to say thank you. It means the world to have my family together like this. You raise your glass to him. To the Oakleys. Here, here. Cliff, Duke, Sawyer, and Brooklyn raise their glasses to me towards you. Look at each other in turn, appreciating the family who have made you feel so at home. After dinner, you find Sawyer sitting alone on the porch. You close your front door behind you, muting the sound of Cliff and... Duke's shared laughter. Hey. What are you doing out here all alone? Just, uh, thinking? About? Man, not sure I narrowed down at this point. So much has been going on, my mind just keeps jumping between, you know, Dad, the ranch, my leg, the rodeo. So you're... Are you sure you're ready to give up the rodeo? Sawyer sits back his eyes on the stars. It's funny. People always tell you to chase your dreams, but they never warn you that dreams can change. Two months ago, riding rodeo was the most important thing in the world to me. Now it almost seems kind of silly. 
But, uh, would you miss it? Of course. But giving up on a career in the rodeo doesn't mean I, I can't be a fan of, or tell each other's how to ride. I think I could uh, be good at that teaching juniors. Smile at the image of Sawyer teaching a horde of tiny cowboys and cowgirls. I think you would do it. Sawyer stretches his legs out uncomfortably, scratching at the top of his cast. Much longer until you're free of the thing. Hopefully next week I was I got a follow up and can't wait. I need to take a good long ride around the ranch and start making some lists. See what needs to be done. Maybe start brainstorming some improvements. Ah, uh, you don't have uh, to do anything. Do any halves, do you, Sawyer Oakley? Nah, not my style. He looks out of the moonlight pastures and a sad smile. This ranch is already so special. But I want to make it into something really amazing in honor of Mom and Dad. And I'm uh, glad you're here with me because I'm uh, really going to need all the help I can get. He looks at you with honey colored eyes, sincere. I agree with him. Smile, putting hand on his shoulder. Ah, there's nowhere I'd rather be. Glad to hear it. Roar laughter spills out from inside the house. Shall we go see what they're laughing about? After you. Later that week. You just finish up your morning chores on the ranch. You stretch your arms out, enjoying the warmth of the summer sun. What a beautiful day. Damn it! You follow the sound of Percy swearing, finding him crouched on the side of Mendoza Oakley fence. He has a long stretch of wire and a pair of pliers in his hands. Ouch! Stupid point of piece of- Hey, Percy. I don't remember ordering a scumbag. Can you just leave me alone so I can figure out how to fix this stupid fence? Find my mates. Don't try anything with our cows. The- yeah. I think he's kind of like one of those sheep people, but with cows. Alright, hand me my gun. Cliff, shotgun! Alright, hold on! Turn to walk away, but... Can, can I ask you one thing? Why are you and your friends always such assholes to me? Because you're an asshole to Juliet! She gives as good as she gets! Always on my case about going to college if it's a bad thing. Maybe if you didn't lord it over her so much. I don't lord it over her! Oh, you do. And if it makes her feel like uh, she isn't good as you. If Julia feels crappy for not going to college, that's on her. She never wanted to go. She only cared about hanging out with friends and sneaking out to parties. Percy. I don't believe you. Of course you don't. Juliet's a popper one, and I'm the boring geek. Story of my life. Okay, but that doesn't excuse you being a jerk to her now. I've seen you yelling at her more than any other this whole ranch competition. Because she doesn't know the first thing about ranch management. Do you know how hard it's been uh, to keep up the ranch profitable while every other family-owned ranch in the state is drowning in debt? It's not because we're lucky, it's because Mom and I have worked our asses off. And you don't think Julia wants to help with that? All she's ever wanted to do is a day's work on the farm and clock out. She's a farmhand, not a manager. Have you ever tried to talk to Juliet about your issues with her? Not yelling at her, but actually talking? Seems to me like you and Juliet both have the what of the other lacks. Almost like you make a good team if one of you stop being stubborn long enough to see it. I I guess I hadn't thought of it that way. But even if I even if I was interested in putting our differences aside, she'd never go for it. I wouldn't be so sure. I mean it's Percy and Juliet to put their differences aside and help out with the rants competition. She's pretty. One. Pika Pika. 
Come on, let's go talk to her right now. It's no use. I don't know Juliet like you do. Uh-huh, well, and uh, you don't know her like I do either. All she wants is for you and your mom to be proud of her. Do the right thing by them. Uh, be proud of her. Juliet doesn't care what I think of her. Yes, she does. Every mean thing you've ever said to her, she says back to herself over and over and over. I've heard her do it. I had no idea. Juliet's always been so fearless. I, I never thought she'd take me seriously. Of course she does. You're her big brother. Or she's quiet as he mulls us over. As if he's suddenly maturing. I still don't know. Oh my god, Percy, just get in the goddamn tractor so I can drive you home. Uh, okay, okay. I swear to god, I'll shove my foot so far up your... Why, Juliet in the barn, hunched over table, tablet, the calculator and a pile of scrap papers are beside her. Stupid damn R! Uh, let me guess, uh, the books aren't balancing? Shut your pie hole, Percy! Juliet glances up and startles when she notices you. John, what are you doing here? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm here with Percy. I think you two need to talk. About what? Look what a smug little jerk face he is! I told you this was stupid. I'm going back to the fence. And how are you planning on fixing it? By yelling at it? Oh, you can't even fix a fence? And you're not helping, Julianne. Uh-huh. You know I'm on your side, but... You haven't been completely honest with me. Percy said you, um, we're more focused on slacking off and going to parties than business. Well, yeah, when I was younger. Uh, who cares about learning stuff like that when you're a teen? I did. Well, I didn't, okay? I liked being outside with Dad and working with my hands. I wasn't thinking about the future. I've been wanting to get more involved for years now, but Mom's been fo focused on you like she's written me off, like both of you have. Mom never wrote you off, and neither do I. Not, not actually. You look between the two siblings, fully aware that this is the first real conversation they've probably had in years. I know I kind of flit flighty. I know I can be kind of condescending. Juliet sighs. I can't do this account stuff. I've been bashing my head against her for days, but not even Asia can explain it so I can understand. Maybe you should take over the ranch. Percy sits down next to his sister, for once not minding the hay and muck around him. Maybe we could try running it together. For real? Uh, yeah, I mean, trial run couldn't hurt, at least. And, uh, even if I wanted to take over, I wouldn't be able to do it without your support. The farmhands will respect me, but they respect you and they'll follow your lead. Okay, how would this work? I wouldn't get stuck with all the hard labor while you're making important decisions. We'll talk to each other for once, like... Like no? Percy takes the tablet from Juliet and pulls up a blueprint. I haven't even told Mom about this idea yet. Sheep prices have been steadily increasing the past few years, and I was thinking we can invest in another ram and increase our sheep to two herds for, os for higher offspring. There, this is the blueprint for the new pen. That's a really good idea. Will this be covered or open air? Open air. I was trying to keep the cost down. Our sheeps do li usually have a healthier offspring. Lots more of them might be worth it in the long run. And I bet I can convince Charlie to give us a discount on materials, which would help in the initial cause. Well, that would be great. You say back, expelling a long sigh of relief as Percy and Juliet get caught up in their new business vision. Finally. And you just leave. Oh, okay. I was about to say, you just sneak out while they're working. Later, Juliet walks you out. Well, that's the last thing I thought would happen today. Same here. I didn't think Percy and I would have ever worked things out without someone kicking our asses. 
And I know we had a long road ahead of us, and it's not all fixed in one afternoon, but what I'm trying to say is thanks, John. You slide your thumb through her belt loop and pull her to you. You stop when her lips her a breath from hers. Anytime. Julia nudges her nose against yours, brushing her lips over your cheek. I love you, John. I love you too, Julia. She grins and winds her arms around your neck. You capture her lips in yours, kissing her long and hard. A few days later. Brooklyn bounds onto your bed with Wilbur in her arms. I can't believe we finally get to see the Small Town USA episode. I'm so excited. Do you think we uh, we all made it in? Do you think they followed the storylines we suggested? I'm sure the answer to both of those questions is yes. Okay, then I have another much important question. What are you going to wear to the premiere tonight? I hadn't really thought about dressing up. It's, it's just a screening in high school. Well, that was your first mistake. Your second is not taking advantage of every opportunity to look your best. Lucky for you, I have a little something in mind. All right, all right, let me see. Hmm. I mean, I guess. You change in the bathroom and then show off your look for Brooklyn. Well, uh, what do you think? You two look like a movie star. Do you think anyone in town has red carpet? Uh, somehow, I doubt that. But, uh, now come on. We don't want to be late for our own premiere. I uh, keep a, an eye on Wilbur Spike. Or, you know what, uh, it's time for the premiere. There's a thrill in the air as you enter the high school theater with the Oakleys and Co. Well, I think I'll see our people. Where points to where your friends fill an entire row, Curly turns and waves you down. Over here, y'all! Just a moment, John. What the hell do you want? What can I do for you, Calhoun? I was wondering if you and uh, Brooklyn would say a few words before the screen. Y'all are the reason we're here, after all. Uh, Brooklyn should have. You've started this, Brooklyn. It's wrongly right you get to finish it. Thanks, John. Your sport has always meant a lot to me. Excellent. Aisha said it uh, would uh, add a little extra something to uh, the proceedings, and I think she's right. He heads toward the front of the theater, and you nod, Brooklyn, playfully. So, uh, what are you gonna say? You'll have to wait and see. The auditorium starts to fill up, and you and Brooklyn find your way towards your friends. Damn, John, you really brought the sweet red carpet to Sweet Ridge with that outfit. Brooklyn, I uh, saved you a seat. Thanks, baby. Oh, isn't that adorable? She all but skips over and wraps her arms around Miles, kissing him sadly on the cheek. I missed you this week. I missed you every week. You should grab a seat too, John. I think we're about to start. Ah, oh, she looks pretty. You take the seat beside Julia. Someone stepped up their fashion game tonight. Ah, oh, thanks, Julia. Are you excited to see this hometown represent the entire state of Montana? Well, hell yeah. It's about time Sweet Ridge gets the recognition we deserve. Especially after all that hard work and everyone's put in the show. Attention, y'all. This show is about to begin. But first, a few words from the Whip Smart team who made this premiere possible. Brooklyn stands and faces the crowd. everyone. I just want to say how happy I'm going to be here. Like, truly, honestly happy. Sweet Ridge is the most amazing town in America. I'm so happy more people are able to hear about it. Now, let's watch ourselves get famous. Crowd breaks out in enthusiastic applause as she takes her seat. Woo! Well said. Children sweet. Crowd quiets down as the projector whirs. You can see the final moments of the previous show wrapping up. I really wish Bentley was here to watch this with us. At least you got a good excuse to call him later. Have you heard from him since the big news? Well, uh, 
meaning to text him a few times a day, but he's pretty busy with the next batch of towns. Yeah, well, is he happy with this episode? You know, he hasn't actually mentioned it. Shh, it's starting! The lights go down as you turn to watch Small Town USA opening credits play across the screen. Here we go. Beneath the endless blue sky of rural Montana lies the town of Sweet Ridge. A town that makes its humble living from farming and tourism. A town of simple players and simple people. But don't be taken in by the kind faces and deceptive smiles. Sweet Ridge is a town on the brink of extinction, a crumbling cesspool of small town corruption and backward values. Wow. I was outside the shop when I heard a creaking sound, and I look up and saw the sign starting to fall, and then it crashed right where I was standing. Would not tell you this town's going to the dogs. Whoa. What the hell is this? They completely cut Dallas out. It's fine. But I don't understand. Watch as the screen shows Mayor Calhoun emerging from Judy's Cafe, sandwich in his hand. Oh, sorry, Mayor. I didn't mean to make you drop your sandwich. No trouble, Charlie. No trouble. See you around. Sure, see you. The hell? Nothing like the five-second rule can't fix. And is any wonder when they'll land by this man? Ew, dude. What? Five-second rule? Shut up if I drop my sandwich. This isn't the show we made. I, I don't understand what's happening. Bailey never said... Yo, this is bad. But... Change is coming to Sweet Ridge. Can you believe the fire mayor's finally stepping down? Surprised he was the brains to realize he was doing a fool's job all of his years. I didn't agree to that being shared. I didn't ever know where we were being filmed. Yeah, that can't be legal. Actually, the contract you signed means anything and everything in this whole entire like time frame was able to be put in there. After years of disastrous mismanagement, Mayor Calhoun is stepping down in the running to save Sweet Rage from itself. I don't care who you have to pay to get him to make me mayor. Just get it done. A millionaire businessman intent on squeezing every last dollar from a dying community. Hey! Oh no. And a naive, hugely... Highly strung, blow in with nothing left to lose. Aisha, the potholes on the South Street are getting out of hand. I don't really have time to deal with potholes right now, Dallas. I got a lot going on with the store and the campaign. I uh, know, that's why I'm bringing it in. A lot of folks will be happy if you can show them you can take small issues seriously. And Dallas, I don't have time. Sorry, I bothered. You look at Aisha, she slumped in her seats, her head in her hands. What kind of attitude is that for Mayor? Hey, Aunt Aisha, you kind of sound like Teat. Okay, this is getting out of hand. Leaped her feet and charged down the aisle at the footage switches to an interview with Colt. Well, I see, we got done no more than a few years left if that. I was talking about human civilization in general, not Sweet Ridge. He yanked the projector's plug from the wall, sending the screen into merciful darkness. He turned to see a sea of furious faces. How could you let them do that to us, John? I didn't know. I'm so sorry. The lights flicker on as everyone starts shouting. It must have been that producer, Bailey Johnson! Oh, there's no way. He wouldn't have done that to Kurt... To our town? Hey, he wouldn't have lied to me like that. He's a slimy producer from L.A. What do you expect? I'm sorry, Curly, but it sure seems like he tricked us. 
Damn Hollywood elite, this is just like Agricorp all over again. Yeah, that big guy came to screw the little guy again. Well, I'm not standing for it, and I'm not watching any more of this tribe. This is all my fault. You didn't do anything wrong, honey. That's right. This isn't just sweet-faced teenagers' fault. It's Aisha Roan Horse's fault. What? Whose store was it that this city slicker producer so frequent seen going in and out of? Sure wasn't mine. He was in the general store a hell of a lot. And who's been seen in this company all around town? Sure wasn't my campaign manager. And who's nearly flew to Los Angeles herself to pitch this damned hit job? Way I see it, Aisha Roan Horns has some explaining to do. The show was way harder on Aisha than you. Which shows just how much life experience inside she lacked. But Aisha should have seen this coming. She should have protected Sweet Ridge. That settles it. Jasper T for mayor. One by one, the cry is taken up until uh, over half of Sweet Ridge is on their feet. Tate, 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 Tate. Aisha springs to her feet and runs from the hall, her face in her hands. Tate gives you a smug smile as you run after her. I'm gonna punch you in your goddamn face. Aisha? You hear the soft sound of crying and follow it across the street. Aisha sits against the outside wall of the store, her arms curled around her knees. Please, John, just leave me alone. Can't let Jasper get to you. He's just mad that you kicked his ass in the debate, so he's trying to pin this on you. This is exactly what he wants you to do, how he reacts. I don't give two hoots about Jasper Tate. I care what I saw on the screen. I thought this campaign made me stronger, but there I was yelling at Dallas. I don't even remember that. That's how long this has been. Either that or I just zoned it up. And for what? Because he was trying to show me how to improve the tale while I was exhausted and stressed out? <clears throat> you kneel beside Aisha and wrap your arms around her. She leans into you, burying her tear-stained face in your chest. You're human. You made one mistake. There's no excuse. I hurt a friend. This is how I react under stress. Then I don't deserve to be mayor. Nah, that's why you have to be mayor. Dallas approaches you from across the street. Because I was horrible to you? Because you know you were horrible to me. And you apologize not two hours later. Just because it wasn't caught on camera doesn't mean I forgot. I forgave you then and I forgive you again now. But I won't forgive you if you give up and let that son of a bitch take over our town. Yeah, Asia. Sweet Ridge and Egypt. Exactly. Especially after this small town USA disaster. Me, Dallas' eye and smile, he smiles back and then offers Asia his hand. <clears throat> what do you say? He hesitates. I say. They are less than 24 hours until Sweet Ridge votes for a new mayor. She raises her chin and a determined smile spreading across her tear-stained face. So we better get to work. Can you salvage her campaign in time? Find out in the next chapter. Okay. So I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you'll receive notifications of when I upload content. And remember to uh, head down in the description below. Links to social media, a few links to support me and my uh, content. And uh, yeah, without further ado, once again, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Good night.